Hello there, thank you for joining me today. Welcome to the Math Reflective. My name is Kathy Dixon. I'm a sixth grade middle school math teacher. I just started this channel a few months ago and typically I've been reflecting on my teaching and piloting a new math resource called Open Up Resources 6-8 Math, but I wanted to introduce myself in a different way today. I just started summer break a few days ago and I wanna walk you through a day in the life of a middle school math teacher. I made this video the last week of school, so I'm not really taking you on a classroom tour, but I'm gonna take you along with me throughout my typical day so that you know what it's like. Stay tuned. We generally get the coffee prepped the night before, so all we have to do is add water in this particular coffee maker, brews it in three minutes, which is great. And I never used to drink coffee. I started about seven or eight years ago, but now that I teach middle school and have to be up early, it saves me. Of course, the next thing I do is get the dogs fed, fill up their bowls and water. They're very social eaters, so they will not eat unless we're eating. They'll go all day without eating, so they like to eat when we eat. Okay, so these are the things that I use for breakfast every day of the week, except for Wednesdays. On Wednesdays, I usually make an omelet or eggs, refried beans, and I spend a little more time on my breakfast. But um, I use this Greek yogurt. It's plain, non-fat Greek yogurt, and I get it from Aldi because it's only $2.99 a tub, which is really cheap for Greek yogurt, and I just um, had, it, had to train myself to learn to love um, plain yogurt like this but I do have diabetes in my family so I try to keep my glycemic index low and um, I have this every day and I put blueberries in it I get these frozen blueberries from Target they're currently like $7.99 a bag and I put a little bit in a bowl and microwave them for 40 seconds and that what's really nice is that it provides a lot of juice to mix with the yogurt and then from Trader Joe's I add in this organic flaxseed meal just as another health benefit and I mix all that together. And then I also, from Trader Joe's, get these British muffins. I used to use the multigrain kind, but they stopped carrying those. So now I just allow myself the plain white ones. My husband and I are addicted to these. We have one every day. We buy four pouches at a time. And that's kind of like my little treat every day. Um, instead of jam, I use butter and then I make a cinnamon and sugar, mostly cinnamon. Cinnamon is known to perhaps um, help fight diabetes and keep blood sugar down. So I use the cinnamon and sugar every day. So that's my breakfast. I go ahead and get that ready and drink my coffee. Another reason I love this Greek non-fat plain yogurt is the protein and calorie content and low sugar. So it's 100 calories for a two-third cup serving and that's 17 grams of protein and only seven grams of sugar. leave for school about 6 35 a.m. It's about a 10 minute ride, a little bit less if there's not much traffic. So I'm really grateful that I live so close by. I'm at a stoplight. I generally listen to Caleb in the morning. I really do find it encouraging.
after I come in and I put my school bag down, I get my laptop plugged in and get that started. I take out my coffee and water for the day back there at that personal desk I showed you. I like to get my board ready. Um, I'm a little bit funny about this, but I feel like this sets me up for success for the whole day and I take time to carefully write out what we're doing, what the objective is, and what our agenda is. I also feel it helps students be freer to take risks and if they have that comfort level and that routine of knowing where to look every day, knowing exactly what the learning target is, if there's any homework, and how are we going to get to the learning target. So I like to get that done really quickly and see if there's anything I need to make copies of, but honestly I don't use paper that much, so usually I don't have to run to the copier in the morning. Basically, I usually take my unit sequence with me if I can't remember the learning targets, but of course it's really close to the last day of school. So what my standard math, this is two periods a day, they're going to be finishing up an activity from Open Up Resources 6-8 Math. We're in the Equations Unit, which is Unit 6, and we're doing an activity that employs a math language routine called Stronger Clear Each Time, and it's really to help all students be more articulate and refine their thinking after having several conversations with peers, because what we're finding is that, especially in math, students are not, they might know how to calculate problems well, but they don't always explain it in writing well or verbally explain it to each other. So we're working on an activity with this about equations, and it's about a genie's offer. Um, you have two options to pick, option one, that you get $50,000. Option two was that you get two coins and every day they double. And they're supposed to be thinking about exponents. This is kind of our intro into exponents. So tomorrow we're gonna to be finishing that up and we're actually using and experimenting with Desmos to do the stronger clear each time routine. And I will have some more videos up pretty soon about those. And then as you can see, I have the agenda. We're gonna recap what we did on Thursday with this, and then we're gonna finish the Genie's Offer. For my sixth grade advanced students, and they're working on the seventh grade level of the Open Up Resources 6-8 Math, they're gonna be taking an assessment tomorrow on equations and, and expressions. So their objective is to demonstrate mastery of equations and expressions and then because it's the end of the week I won't have anything else for them to do I'll just have them read when they're done so when they come in they look at the board they can write down if they have homework of course with only a couple days till the grades close I do want students to work on missing work if they have it so now that the board's set for the day I go and check email real quick and run to the bathroom one more time before the students walk in and they walk in about 7 20. Around this part of my room I used to have another blue table here and the way that I used to teach was more a direct teaching method and I had a document camera set up and I'd often sit there and I would you know take notes for like the first 20 minutes of our 40 minute periods but I removed that table this year because I'm kind of a little bit trying to defront the room I'm not getting flexible seating yet but our district is piloting it next year with some of the teachers and we did pass a referendum in our town so we are all going to be getting new furniture in the next couple years so so I'm mo mostly using an iPad now to teach and I project everything on the screen using AirPlay and Notability. So I often have students reflect their work up on the screen more than me. So I am really walking around the room a lot and I don't really need to have a front of the room. But I do like to sit back at my desk in my you know plan time and things like that. Also I wanted to show you this part of my room back here or up here. Um, this bulletin board I have some women in STEM that have done important work in STEM up here and I also use this as kind of like my set if I'm going to make a video for my YouTube channel at school. I have a stool that I've had since gosh I've been married 25 years now and I have a stool that was from our first kitchen. So I have that stool here that I sit on usually for vlogging and um, you can see I put the math reflective there and I also have some decorative these are actually ornaments but I had gone on the crochet kids international website and bought some clothes and it was 40% off and I thought that these would look really good on my board and what I put here is a bookshelf from home because I like to have little pieces of home with me at school like this red lamp is my son's from his first bedroom and he's now 22 years old and you can see there's a picture of me kayaking. Um, I'm from Michigan originally, and whenever I go back there, I go kayaking with my sister. 
And then I have two pieces of pottery that my students, I mean my own children made as students here because they both attended this middle school. So it's very sentimental to me. And then of course a basket of calculators because so many of my students forget calculators every day. I mean, it's terrible how much they forget their calculators. If you also notice, I have some Pi Day projects. Um, these are keepers that students made me and spent a lot of time on, so I'd love to have those on display as well. You might be wondering about our dress code at our school. Our principal and assistant principal don't really give us a dress code. They trust us as professionals that we're going to dress appropriately. So generally I start out a little dressier at the beginning of the week and as we head towards Friday, I'm definitely in denim um, by the end of the week, but it doesn't matter if we wanted to wear jeans. Um, we're never talked to about that. We can wear you know, sweatshirts that our spirit wear for our school. Our math department has a lot of different math shirts over the years, every year we kind of pick a theme. So you know, this is what I'm wearing today. I've got white capri pants on and some nice shoes and a colorful top and a jacket, which I love. I love that there's those days that I can just be casual and then there are the other days where I want to dress up a little bit. So it's really nice. Today's Monday. And on Mondays, we have a team meeting. So how my schedule goes is I have first and second period with students. My first period is a standard math class this year, and my second period is advanced math. And then I have a homeroom time. During homeroom time, I come sit back here in my teacher area, and I check in with each student. I have about 15 students in homeroom, and I'll talk to each of them about what their goals are and what they want to accomplish during that time. If they have no homework or things to work on or projects, they're welcome to read. And then on Fridays, we have fun Fridays, and we we play games like Connect Four or card games, um, but we don't let them play games on their iPads or stream music because we've had some issues in the past with that. So, And then after third period is our fourth period team meeting, and I'm one of four team leaders this year for sixth grade. That's new for me. I had training last summer called um, High Impact Teacher Leader Training. So basically what that means is two things. Part of being a team leader is organizing the team meetings, your weekly meetings for your whole sixth grade department. And this year is the first year we've ever had four people. Often it's one person or just two people. I'll probably make a video separately about this to go into more detail, but we help run the week and um, the agenda and talk about things that we need to hammer out as a team. And the second part of being a team leader is with our professional learning communities. So I'm the sixth grade team leader for math and that means that I'm kind of setting up the meeting for our team, it's four people. I will create an agenda based on our interests and our needs for that week and facilitate. I'm a lead learner in that meeting, I'm definitely not in charge, but being a team leader is two requirements. It's helping plan the sixth grade department and also helping plan for your professional learning communities. So I'll do that fourth period, and then I will have fifth and sixth as planning time periods, and usually, we're kind of a joke in math because even though we have our PLC actually one day a week on Wednesdays, we are talking about math in the hallway almost every day. So the social studies teacher will even make a joke, there's math having PLC again because I don't think it's just the nature of the content. We constantly need to talk about how students are doing or how we're going to change what our plans were. Um, so fifth and sixth period, I'm usually talking to another teacher. Sometimes I go to IEP or 504 meetings or I'm just catching up from the first few periods of the day. Seventh period is our lunch time and honestly, because I get up at 5 a.m. and I'm at school by you know 6.35, I'm starving for lunch by 10.45 or so. So I'll eat during one of my plan periods. I usually have a snack every day about 9, 9.15 when the kids are in homeroom. And I have the same snack every day. I'm very habitual. I have a Trader Joe's Fig cereal bar. They're amazing, you gotta try them. Um, so after lunch is when our eighth period comes in and then I'll teach eighth, ninth, and 10th, another standard class. And then I'll end the day with two more advanced math classes. And then at 2.20 is the final dismissal bell and students go off to the bus. Now in the fall, I coach cheer, so that's about an eight to nine week process and I'll be busy every day then. And then during the rest of the school year, I'm a Title I math tutor on Mondays and then for part of the year on Wednesdays as well. Okay, so it's 11.20. I just want to give you an example of what my desk looks like throughout the day. It just gets messier and messier. I brought my vlogging equipment today because I knew I wanted to record some things in my standard math class that we were doing. And then also, um, if you look at my desk over here, I have students who um, 
they made signs for me of the class cheers that we do. We do cheers for student leader every day and my signs were looking pretty bad so I had students drop those off today. And then I have some assessments from students who are making up assessments that I need to grade. Because like most of us, I usually get kind of a sugar or a chocolate craving right after lunch every day and it's sometimes, I don't know, difficult to get to the, through the day without it. So I always kind of keep a stash from Halloween or other things or a teacher appreciation week. I usually have some kind of little chocolate pieces or something that I can just throw in if I'm feeling that craving, which I'm trying not to do. It seems like teachers eat their way through the year. It starts about Halloween and then we have parent-teacher conferences in November and we're always treated by the parent-teacher organization to a fabulous dinner. Um, on Monday, somebody gets Panera leftovers that they're going to donate and brings it to our school. So on Tuesday mornings, there's usually bread and bagels to take home. And then we go on to the holidays and then we have Valentine's. And I feel like as a teacher, the food's amazing. Um, but like today, even we had such a huge spread. We had an egg dish, we had sausage, we had yogurt and granola and all kinds of things. So. I definitely am looking forward to the summer where I'm not eating constantly and I'm able to exercise more or should I say choosing to exercise more because I could do it when I get home but I'm often distracted and get caught up with other things. I do play tennis during the school year and then I play about three times a week in the summer. That is definitely a passion of mine. I love playing tennis and I just started that sport about 10 years ago so it's never too late to try a new sport. Okay, honestly, I am so full that I don't think I'll eat again till dinner, but I did bring a lunch today, so I'm just gonna show you what's in my lunch bag. The same thing I make every day, I'm a creature of habit, and I have the same exact lunch every day. I always pack my lunch at night so I don't have to think about it. Usually as I'm cleaning up after dinner, I go ahead and pack my lunch, stick it in the fridge, then I'm ready to go the next day and I don't have to think about that. So I got this Vera Bradley lunch bag years ago, probably about seven years ago for half price. I think it was $12. And every day, like I said, I pack the same thing. So I always have baked plain chips, a little bit of those. I always have one cut apple, so I cut up a uh, gala apple, because I love those. And then I also always pack a half a turkey sandwich. Usually I have lettuce on there, sometimes spinach, but it's a pretty simple lunch. Um, I have a snack, as I said, during homeroom time, I have a snack around 9 or 9.15, and that is always my Trader Joe's cereal bar, which I actually have right here. I love the fig flavor. These are amazing. It tastes like real food and I love them. I want to talk a little bit about my classroom too. As you can see, I have everything in tables of fours and fives in my classroom. Um, next year, as I said, I'm not getting flexible seating yet, but I am going to attend a session at our Learning Innovation and Summit Conference at the beginning of the school year about flexible seating and just the different things I need to think about and consider. And even though I won't get furniture for another one to two years, I do want to start thinking about that in different ways that I can set up my classroom. So my co-teacher and I talked about offering flexible seating even though we won't have the furniture yet. So allowing students to sit all over the classroom and um, talking about how we're going to set that up at the beginning of the year. So I'm excited about that change. So at this point in the day, it's kind of like my quiet time. So I often turn out the lights in the room. It's kind of dark in here, but I like to feel a little bit of peaceful and I've got the beautiful daylight outside and a, a pretty view out my window. Um, so I have students coming in in a few minutes because my advanced class took an assessment today and they're not quite finished. So some of them finish during homeroom, but the rest will come in during their lunchtime and I'll have to write them a pass if they're hot lunch and then they'll come up in here and take that assessment. And I also met with my math team really quickly after our department um, team meeting and we talked about what we're going to do the last two days of school and then talked with my co-teaching partner because we're practicing doing a stronger, clearer each time math language routine with one of our lessons and we're actually going to be speaking on it at our Learning and Innovation Summit in August. So we are just talking about some details about that. And so my break is almost over and students are coming in in a few minutes.
One of the best parts of coming home every day is seeing my two dogs when I get home, Cooper and Janie. They'll be right at the door to greet me when I open it. Watch. <gasps> Hello, Bubs. Hello, Bubs. Oh, it's good to see you. <gasps> it's so good to see you. It's been so long. Now the first thing I do when I get home is greet my dogs, as you saw, and then I unpack my stuff. So I take out my water bottle and my coffee, and I refill my water already for the next day and put it back in my backpack. My coffee, I clean out and put it away for the next day. And then I always unpack whatever is remaining in my lunch if I need to clean out any containers. But yet today, my lunch is still at school for tomorrow because I didn't have to eat my lunch today. But usually what I do is empty out my lunch and then I'll add my snack, my cereal bar from Trader Joe's so I don't forget. I'll put that right in when I get home. And then when I go upstairs to change, I usually pick out my outfit right away in the afternoon for the next day so that I'm ready and I don't have to think about it. Now I know tomorrow is neon day, so we're supposed to wear neon. I'm gonna have to look through my closet. I don't really know if I have anything neon. I might have to borrow from my daughter. So I'm what you call an empty nester. Um, my son is 22 and he's actually home right now. He's downstairs, I can hear him talking, but he's moving. He's moving out of state because he just graduated college and he's starting his own career. So very bittersweet for this mom. Um, I'm really excited that he's met his goals and he was able to get a job, but I'm so sad. So we're gonna be moving him in a few days on the weekend next weekend. And then my daughter is at home for the summer. She just finished her freshman year in college but she was actually in another state all weekend celebrating her cousin's graduation. I wasn't able to go because I'm still working, but she was able to go and celebrate with her cousin. So she's on her way back tonight. Um, and so I will be cooking for three of us instead of four of us. And then usually during the school year now, because our students, or our, I'm sorry, because our children are grown up, it's usually just my husband and I. So I still haven't figured out what to do for dinner. I usually try to do a meal plan on Sundays. My husband and I talk about it. We plan a shopping list. We kind of divide that up from the two of us. And then I would already usually know what my dinner is going to be, but I have no idea right now. So I'm gonna look in the freezer and decide. Okay, the next step in my afternoon usually is taking my dogs for a walk. They're waiting by the door here and they can't wait to get some attention. And they're often fussy and high maintenance between 4.30 and 6, kind of like young children. It's pretty funny. You guys happy? Okay, it is almost seven o'clock now. I've had dinner, made dinner, cleaned up and changed in my comfies. Honestly, I cannot wait to get home every day and take out jewelry and put on sweats and a t-shirt and a hoodie or a tank. Um, I love that about when I come home. I like to be dressed up during the day, but I can't wait till I'm casual again at home. So it's kind of quiet here right now and I am working on my computer. I'm actually working on a new video and also going to check and try to clear out as many assignments and finish up my grading. Um, I usually spend, I'd say, maybe about an hour at home, sometimes more. I do have a lot of math test to grade, so I'm actually going to be working on those as well. So now that I say that, I'm going to be working more than an hour tonight. But that's okay, because it'll all be over this week, since it's the last week of school. I usually go to bed about between 9.40 and 10 o'clock. However, with my, my children home, I tend to stay up a little bit later, um, but I get up about five after five so I do want to get a good night's sleep and um, that's about it. Thank you for following me on my journey throughout my day in the life of a middle school math teacher. Pretty exciting right? Well, I hope this video showed you the reality of what it's like to be a middle school math teacher. Of course I didn't show any clips with students but I will continue to make videos that reflect on my teaching and some of them will include some of the activities that I do in my classroom. As always, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and go ahead and hit the bell. That way you'll get notifications when I have new videos. And thank you so much. Please follow me on Instagram at The Math Reflective or on Twitter at Math Reflective. And you can also find some more information to connect with me below in the description of this video. Thanks so much for watching. Are you ready for more?